When I first started at Convergent Technologies, the founder, Alan Michaels, had left Intel, and he believed he was going to be making a single board computer. Computer, computer that fit on one circuit board back in the early 1980s was a radical notion. And what Alan did was he went around to computer companies and said, look what I got. How many would you like? And they all kind of knew Alan from his work at Intel and said, wow, that's great. You know, we'll take three for our R&D lab. And Helen went, no, 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 I'd like you to take 3,000. And he said, first company he went to said, Alan, you know, we're looking at a new type of computer, but um, you don't have a, it doesn't even have a case, it doesn't have an operating system, it doesn't have any applications, it's a nice building block, but maybe we'll take three and, you know, maybe we'll license the design from you. So Alan went to another company, this time NCR, and he gave them the same pitch and they said, Alan, we'll take five. He said, 5,000? No, we'll take five. Gave him the same story. It doesn't have a box and whatever. And finally, Alan went to the third company, a company called Burroughs at the time. And they said, Alan, you know, we'd take 10. He said, oh, 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 you mean you take 10 boards? Absolutely. But would you like to see my box? And they said, well, you didn't mention a box when you, oh, let me draw the specs of the box. It, it has an enclosure, and they said, oh, great. Does it have an operating system? Absolutely, it has an operating system. Uh, uh, what else does it have? Well, what else do you need? Oh, does it have a word processor? Has a word processor. What, and what else did Apple, well, what were you thinking about? Oh, has one of those. Right there in discovery, Alan finally realized that what he was hearing was that what, what he had was good enough to get three, but was missing a couple of zeros. Now, of course, he had to go back to the rest of his company, which had all seven people, and said, uh, good news, I just got an order for 10,000 computers from Burroughs. Bad news is we need an operating system and a set of applications. And his co-founder, Bob Garrow, looked at him like he had been, you know, somebody hit this guy with a brick because he was clearly, he said, Alan, you know, this is like 1987. You just don't, like, off the shelf get an operating system instead of applications. And so Alan, being a great entrepreneur, said, well, where do you get them? And Bob said, oh, we're in Silicon Valley. I don't know. Xerox Park. What are you going to do? Hire Xerox Park? He hired the head of the advanced system division of Xerox Park, who came with an operating system. And the guys who wrote the Bravo word processor became the convergent machine. He went from a company that potentially would have sold you know, 25 boards in the first year to one that actually sold its company four years later to Burroughs for 400 million bucks. Now, that's an interesting story about Discovery, was that Alan was good at listening. But what's even more interesting is what happened at his next company called Ardent. Alan was now a successful CEO. In the early 80s, Alan Michaels was well known in Silicon Valley, bad boy of Silicon Valley. Kleiner Perkins, everybody wanted to fund his next company, anything he wanted to do. Alan decided he's going to build a graphics supercomputer, a cross between a Cray and a Silicon Graphics, uh, which in hindsight turned out to be the um, exactly if you were making a floor wax and dessert topping in one. Um, it's the null set, but we only found that out later. Um, and this time, Alan Michaels was not in the field talking to customers. Where do you think he was? Any idea? Second company, successful CEO. Where was he? In the office. Who was he talking to? His investors. Who was the people? in the field talking to customers, his VPs, particularly his VP of marketing, yours truly. And customers were saying, Steve, this is the worst combination of product features we've ever seen. <laughs> but if you ripped off this piece and just gave us the server, the price performance of this stuff is really, and if you change the vector unit to do this, it was great. Well, I went around, I went around to almost every national lab, I went around to the NSA, I went around to a bunch. A lot of excitement for something about 20% different from what we were building. Not completely, but different. So I went back to headquarters feeling really smart. I actually found out what customers want. What do you think happened when I went to Alan Michael's office and told him, hey, guess what, our baby's ugly. In fact, your baby's ugly. <laughs> what do you think he said? You're fired. In fact, I was fired three times that day. <laughs> so important heuristic here. If you're going to do customer discovery at all, and by the way, he never listened. Company went out of business painfully. One of the 
wonderfully enjoyable failure sagas of Silicon Valley. If I had two hours, I would tell you. But here's another heuristic. If you're going to go out and discover whether customers like your idea or not, this is not an outsourceable problem. The founders need to do this. Particularly, the people capable of changing strategy need to be the ones hearing good news and bad. Why? Because, you know, it's like hiring, you know, some consulting agency. Ah, what do they know? Or worse, Steve, you're just not explaining it well enough. Anybody ever hear that one? Oh, you're just, we just need to explain it harder. Getting feedback from customers is the most valuable thing you will do as entrepreneurs. It is not outsourceable. And if you're a technical founder, don't believe that, oh, I'll hire a professional salesperson and they'll sell it for me without you ever, ever leaving the building. 